Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. Um, hey Scott, uh, I got your transmission late yesterday. Uh, this is Scott's automatic transmission. He went with a super heavy duty bull ripper. And lock up torque converter is here as well. Uh, Scott, I did not get any information about sending your original transmission back. I don't know if there was a core charge. I don't know what's going on with this. Normally there's uh, a tag or some information about where to send it and um, I don't have any information at all with this. There was just uh, the tag, the delivery tag and no other information. So if you know something I don't, uh, send me along the information and uh, I can get yours, I get the transmission pulled, the transfer case pulled off yours and send your, your transmission back if they gave you a core charge. I don't know if they did or not. Um, I just got the transmission and the torque converter and that's all I got. So let me know what's happening there. Okay, let's head over to the Blockmaster and see what we got going. Okay guys, finally got the 258 on the Blockmaster. Quite a bit of setup here. I've got some 246 blocks under our stands and uh, some five inch risers with some jacks on it to get this guy in the exact right position and let me show you what's going on here this is a feeler gauge this is a six thousandths feeler gauge just glides right under there in and out of there sliding under there and finally tight over here so we know we're out at least six thousandths we got some twist in that guy so that's why we're gonna deck it you don't want to start out bad so uh, I just yesterday I uh, I set this in some new cleaner that I'm trying I think you can see how clean this actually came out this was completely grimed up and I knew I needed to clean it before we started machining. So I have a drum set up with this new um, alkaline degreaser in it. And it, it did remarkable. And uh, I only left it in there maybe, oh, probably just about eight hours, just overnight. If I left it a little bit longer, I might have gotten this last little bit of junk. But um, that scraped right off. But... Um, no scraping, no pressure washing, no nothing. It just just melted the stuff away. So I'm real happy with that. And you know we don't want to machine anything until it's clean. So we're squeaky clean. Straight edge says we're six thousandths off at least. So we're gonna fire up the blockmaster and see what that surface looks like. See how it's gonna to take to clean it up. So let me get things square it away here and we'll start machining okay guys we're just going to take a real light cut uh, I'm going to give it two thousandths and we'll see what that gets us I um, oops. we'll give it two thousandths and uh, not sure where we're going to hit or what's going to happen here but uh, we'll take a light very light pass Well, let's take a peek at it working. Just leaving a shadow all the way across the block. Uh, I know the block is set up perfectly square to the center line and stuff, so we're just going to have to trust the accuracy of the machine. And uh, this is this is just a 2,000 tickle off of here. 
and uh, we'll take a look at it when it's done. Okay guys, we're just starting to pick up on the side closest to me. So, you can tell that this block was definitely out of whack. The head is the same way. I put a straight edge on the head. The head's going to need um, a little bit more than the actual block. But the block, you can see, is just picking up right there. And uh, the first pass will tell you exactly what the block is like. So, we'll just wait and see. Okay, there's the first two thousandths. This was actually low on the straight edge because this area was high, I believe. Uh, we are perfectly true to the center line of the crank, which is how we want to do our decking. This cleaned up pretty nice down this end. We started losing it. Lost it all in here. Nothing in here and just uh, almost made it across and then we lost it here so that's only two thousandths nothing nothing to worry about uh, we'll take another two and we'll see where that gets us down this end and like I say we are perfectly decking on the crankshaft center line so we're not going to worry that we took a little more here than down there this is how we want to put the block back uh, it's been since 1983, so you can imagine all the hot cold cycles this went through. And this is why 90% <clears throat> of the engines are going to need a decking. Um, I, I get a lot of questions from guys. They're like, I can't keep a head gasket in there. Uh, the head gasket's leaking. I'm getting water in the oil. And eventually they'll send me the engine and nothing the head or the block will not have been decked and if you want a long lasting engine you want one that's going to last another 50 60 70 years like these old world war ii engines you have to take the steps to make all your surfaces true and you can see this was a this was again it was a bear to set up there's a lot going on here uh, on the block master because you only have a couple inches of travel you know, you've only got a little bit of travel here. You have to bring all your work up to the cutter head. So you got to get pretty creative at your setups, and you need to make sure everything is true. Like I say, I use Precision 246 blocks, and uh, I know that our crankshaft center line is perfectly level. The machine's level, the block's level, everything is coming along nicely. Okay, here goes another 2,000 cut, and I got the speed slowed down on this one in case it cleans up perfectly. We'll be able to uh, make this be the last pass. If not, we'll make another 2,000 pass. It's easier on the machine and the cutting and the quality of finish is better when you take light cuts and slow the speed down. So, yeah, maybe we'll kick it down to 45. And uh, it'll probably take 10 minutes to get across there, but it's well worth it uh, rather than hogging a heavy pass through at a high speed. So hang in there, and I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. Okay guys, there it is, perfectly decked, cleaned up every bit of it, and it's actually five thousandths I took off uh, from my 
uh, very first dimension there it's, it just came in at five thousandths once I got this down the straight edge came in perfect I'll grab the straight edge again and show you how uh, how that cleaned up okay guys there's the straight edge like I had it when we started that is a one thousandths feeler gauge you see we're not going in anywhere you can just hear that straight edge is hitting everywhere it's perfect you can tell when it's and you got a good surface by your straight edge sound but um, can't even get a 1000 feeler gauge anywhere and um, that's what you need if you want a long life engine a, a perfect deck and uh, I gotta get the head set up like I said the head is the head's rough too and uh, that's gonna take quite a bit of setup to get that on there and I don't know if I'll get to that today I've gotta move some engines again a story in my life is moving engines around but um, I uh, I'll show you the head surfacing when that happens, but, uh, but for now, uh, we're making little bits of progress here and there. So, we're gonna start boring Scott's 258 next. Uh, I've got uh, we've got to get one block off the sip, and then we'll get him jigged up on there, and we will start boring for 30 over pistons. Okay, here we are at Travis's block. Honing is finished, and just trying to show you your cross hatch on there. There it is, Travis. Okay, that's going to hold oil real nice. And your block is next to Lou's block, and these are the next two to get washed and then assembled. And uh, let me get out of this area, I'll show you what else we got going on. Okay guys, Lockmaster is cleaned up and ready for the next engine. And let's take a walk over this way. Okay, on the sip I have <clears throat> on this side I have Scott's 258 uh, all jigged up and ready to be bored. And again, we are grabbing it by the crank center line. I uh, had to get creative on lashing it down. We've got some jacks under there. It is uh, perfectly level and true. So the bores will be perfectly in line with the crank. Over here, I've got the Willys Americar engine. Oh, okay. Uh, this is the 442 block, so we're just calling this one the 442 engine. And it's very nice on the sip that, um, I'm trying to get you in there. I can't really do it. Yeah, there's the 442. Right there, 442. Um, nice on the sip because I can get two things on here at once. So, a lot of setup. Uh, it does take a fair amount of time to get these guys perfect. But once uh, the setup is done, uh, it's easy just to jump from center to center of each hole. So uh, it's been a busy day. It's getting late. So I'm going to call it quits here. But uh, we'll be back and I will show you the boring on the 258. You've seen so many L and F heads that uh, probably just buzz right through that and get that off there and get that into the wash station next. But uh, I'll show you the 258 and how I go about doing that. Uh, much bigger uh, cylinders there. So we'll set up with some of our new carbide tooling. Some of the bigger, heavier stuff. And go after that one next. Okay, we're going to end it here. Thanks for watching everybody. And I will catch you on the next video.